Uh, this presentation is about improving content generation, how to make, uh, how to make a newly generated content uh, meaningful and truthful, uh, relying on open NLP. This is a joint project with J at Oracle. Uh, so overview. Uh, we start with introduction. Uh, going to do a uh, motivation. So why uh, we do that? Uh, why we need uh, generated content? And why today neural generation is not good enough? And how we can improve it? Contribution of this work. Uh, this component of OpenLP called OpenLP similarity, which takes care of a lot of uh, linguistic, semantic, syntactic, and discourse features. Uh, then we will proceed to discourse improvement, uh, how we can improve discourse, uh, overall logical organization of text, uh, doing using this tool, and how we will improve a newly generated content. And then the main topic, how to make content truthful, because the main thing is that the values and phrases in newly generated content are mostly random. So how can we make them uh, real and truthful? And uh, conclusion. Uh, so objective. So uh, deep learning, uh, GPT-2 content, we call it raw content. And in most cases, it is meaningless because the way it is built, it's averaging through uh, millions of similar texts and somehow we average uh, the meaning of words. And by averaging, uh, we get smooth flow of text, but it's meaningless in terms of values. So the idea, we take uh, the smooth uh, content generation results from deep learning, color content, and crossbreed it uh, with the content taken piece by piece uh, from various sources such as web, so that each sentence in uh, true content, not original, but truthful. So we call this content contained from the web as true. So the idea is cross-breed raw content and uh, true content. Uh, we borrow the structure and the content flow of from raw text because that is the part which is acceptable. And this is exactly what impress a lot of observers of deep learning content generation because it has a feeling that humans wrote it in terms of overall flow of consciousness. However, if you focus on what are the values, what are the phrases, do they make sense? They make sense individually, but they don't make sense of the whole thing. So we need to take factoids from true text, I mean, from real text, uh, mine from the web or from other sources, uh, as long as they correspond, they're somewhat similar to raw sentences. Uh, so the motivations in general for content generation. So most uh, web visioners think good quality content uh, comes from real, like user generated content, really passionate fans, professional writers, authors who know a topic well. However, today the demand for uh, content much higher, great uh, demand and a lot of copyright and a lot of content is created these days for different purposes, search engine optimization, marketing, uh, self-promotion, that only high quality professional, passionate fan content, definitely not enough. So content generation is needed. It is needed, but it is, needed. It is not needed in the form uh, deep learning uh, produce it uh, produces it by averaging through uh, training sets, training uh, uh, training uh, documents, because the base it can do, it can do averaging and inserting most typical consecutive words. But this most typical do, do not necessarily, these most typical words do not necessarily uh, make sense. 
and the, therefore expectation of text quality from automated content generation are low and continue deteriorating as can content uh, is more commercial. So let's try to see how we can improve uh, deep learning generated content. And natural language generation is one of the most challenging important tasks, natural language processing. And it has to be original, uh, close to human written text. A current state of the art approach, as I mentioned, is transformer based. GPT, GPT-2, GPT-3. And as uh, the corpus size becomes larger, the averaging is becomes more specific. However, when you average, let's say, uniform text like uh, hospital discharge notes, imagine you average through hospital discharge notes through multiple patents, patients. It's going to be about health, it's going to be smooth, but the parameter values like temperature, weight, and everything not going to be meaningful. So we need, uh, think of it, uh, we need to generate hospital discharge, but from real data, a real note from real data. Again, the focus, major problem is meaningless. Yes. So what we do accept from neural content is overall syntactic and logical structure. It looks pl plausible. Some individual phrases uh, might make sense, but the whole sentence, if you go to the level of sentence, it is meaningful. The main advantage of neural content is original. So we're going to maintain this advantage. And now why open source? Why open source content generation? I think it is necessary just as uh, being opponents to search engines as information access gatekeepers. They want, they have the, on their side automated agents, but they, are, they want their opponents, like content creation, be humans. But we want to kind of compensate and leverage. We want to automatically build good content good enough, so at least search engines do, do not recognize it is written by humans, is artificial. So we somehow try to limit uh, the information access gatekeeper power of search engines. So then search engines would need humans uh, also on the other side to analyze content. Now let's start with example. It's example of uh, GPT-2 writing about poetry, about uh, 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 Pushkin. The first sentence uh, here is acceptable. Once we go to the second sentence, uh, this is a random person, uh, craft, totally random. Uh, we want to see, okay, it's random, but we want to go follow along those lines. We want to interest in who is translating uh, Pushkin. It's going to be a running example. Uh, but if you go to the web, We'll figure out that there's no such person as craft. So it's totally invented person. Uh, the system got it from some average, some individual was approached. Uh, in one text, some Radion, in other text, Romanovich, in third text, craft. So now we want to substitute this with real person and with real uh, fact about translation. So what we find, it's totally different times. It's uh, 20th century, not 19th. And the writer is uh, Vladimir Nabokov, uh, not Kraft. So he turns out to be the only writer simultaneously hold the position giant of both Russian and English literature. And he published English translation of uh, Pushkin, uh, Pushkin's uh, poetry. So what we're going to do. Uh, so this is uh, the purpose of uh, the main thing of this work, replace Kraft with Nabokov. So if you can do it automatically, uh, that would be a win situation. We will maintain the overall content flow on the left, and we will use uh, green entities, which are true entities. So we're going to stop lying and still produce original truthful content. So contribution. Uh, we address... Uh, there are two limitations, uh, uh, two uh, issues with uh, neural content. In addition to wrong values, the general discourse is not very consistent. 
we investigate methods. It's a ba uh, this is based on uh, learning, generating text spans connected by discourse relations. We're going to see what they are in the correct order and use correct words to express it, unlike uh, default uh, neural content generation. This is a neural approach, but it's neural on top of neural, which uh, takes additional training data to improve it. And also, uh, this is a method estimate overall quality. And number two approach, this is not a neural approach. This is like more straight, not the learning, uh, more straight algorithm approach, uh, targeting improvement. And now I'm going to mention uh, the tool. Uh, I've been presenting this tool over the last uh, seven years. Uh, there is a, certain, a lot of development and part of it, including a uh, chat board. Uh, there is a readme uh, showing a lot of options, a lot of tools uh, based on. So basically, the objective of this tool is to make relevance uh, as a tool like linguistic similarity uh, used by other applications so that engineers, integrators don't need to know what how linguistic similarity works and they don't need to know anything about linguistics. And just to mention that there's a lot of uh, tools there there's a uh, classification, it's used for search, uh, content generation, uh, for uh, summarization, and, uh, and also, also for dialects and linguistic uh, features, uh, integration of uh, Stanford, uh, suite of tools, uh, verbnet, uh, uh, taxonomy of verbs, co-references, also, you rely on parse thickets, so it goes beyond uh, syntactic trees, uh, merges syntactic trees for paragraphs, uh, applying discourse level analysis. And basically, uh, it has a suite of uh, learning, including uh, thicket kernel learning, nearest neighbor, and other uh, forms of learning. So again, engineers, integrators don't have to worry about what's inside, uh, just pass two phrases and uh, get similarity measure. And based on that uh, can be content generation, search another. And content generation and chatbots are the components already in this, already in this project. Uh, so chatbot uh, conversing about arbitrary topic uh, using dialogue management and uh, being search engine API. So pretty much access to the web knowledge. It's already uh, part of this project. So now let's talk about uh, discourse incoherence. So when uh, a GPT-2 generate text, for GPT-2, a special discourse markets, uh, markers such as but, before, because, are just uh, 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 words as others. So it uh, like a bird when it learns masking, it learn it tries to predict these words in similar way it predicts other words. However, for discourse, there's a very special thing, very special meaning. So, in content generation, these discourse markers a lot of a lot of times are not in, uh, generated properly, and there's other issues at a higher structural level. So we do experiments for GPT true in the domain of movie reviews. And as we see, discourse structure, not just values, which are random a lot of times, but even discourse structure should be corrected most of the times. Now let's look at uh, what is a discourse tree. So this is text. And the leaves of discourse tree are elementary discourse units. Think of it as phrases. So the whole text like this is split into phrases. And we're going to see examples and text spans, so this is the whole text, uh, split into spans. They are connected discursively by discourse relations. Discourse relations reflect the logic, the author logic, uh, how text is presented. For example, if new entities are introduced, they can first introduce first entity, then second entity, then attribute of first entity, then attribute of second entity, and then relationship between these two attributes. Or I can do in other order, and this order is uh, uh, this order is encoded in uh, uh, in this tree recursively. 
So uh, relation of elaboration, just saying, I'm going to say something, and then I'm going to say something additional. So this is a default relation. Contrast means there is a contradiction. There's something, but something else. Something, but something else. So this is a logical uh, contrast. And here is logical condition. And if we take example of text uh, generated by uh, GPT, uh, then we take uh, co-reference and discourse markers. Numbers here are numbers of elementary discourse unit from 7 to 12. And this is how we show the real part of the discourse tree for this generated fragment. And we see some unbalancing, like this some intuition that tree should be like this, it should be balanced. But in this case, it's not. Uh, this sentence has too many default relations such as joint and elaborations and gen real, like genuine discourse tree is more balanced. Uh, this is another, uh, in, another example. And uh, so how to estimate how good is uh, discourse generation? So what is done, we, uh, the better the text, uh, the easy distinguish generated text, the easy it is to distinguish from uh, human text. So training objective distinguish human text from uh, model text. And the higher the accuracy of distinguishing, of recognition, uh, the law, the higher the accuracy, the lower the quality of text generation. Uh, so we plan discourse relations based on the current uh, currently generated content and generate uh, following text based on it. So simple uh, approach, utilize external discourse markers. Uh, markers. So uh, what is done, text is generated by GPT and then discourse parser is applied and then discourse markers are added as words. And then we learn this whole thing and try to predict not just text using content generation, uh, but also, uh, but also, uh, but also, uh, but we also generate, uh, we also generate uh, text as well as uh, discourse markers. So now, as a logic, uh, now as a overall uh, logic, what we do with discourse, we have a large data set, and then what I just described, uh, shown here, is unit. We have real text, uh, real with uh, fine tuned. Uh, then we have a text with discourse, and then we recognize and we try to optimize. So the lower the recognition accuracy between human and uh, machine, the better is content generation quality. And so the, again, distinguishing between real and fake and real and fake with a, a predicted uh, discourse. Uh, so, and it has to be above uh, so if it's uh, hard enough to differentiate and if uh, model performance is close to 0 0.5, uh, then basically that's, that is what we want. So if it's uh, very hard to distinguish, then we are happy. Uh, now uh, we see uh, the details of experiment. It's IMDB database, uh, GPT-2 model, only meaningful and non-trivial relations other than other than elaboration and joints and short, uh, short opinionated text. And the result is, as you see, still it's hard to approach 0 0.5, uh, but 0 0.8 still show that it is an improvement. Uh, it is an improvement of pure neural content generation without fo focus on discourse. But still, real and fake text, there's still a uh, significant difference. So now let's proceed to uh, correction of entity values. Again, uh, what we are doing, we are merging uh, raw and uh, uh, true text. 
so uh, so uh, what we do uh, let's consider so how do we uh, find this uh, true text to do that uh, to do that uh, we need to form queries uh, from phrases and we are going to consider examples in this logic so uh, we have a raw sentence we have raw phrase uh, noun phrases and like verb phrases from generated context we form or query and uh, trying to substitute uh, different parts for example the producer of movie Titanic uh, was born in 1970. Uh, uh, James uh, Doe. So this is a wrong year, a wrong last name. So a query will uh, or query for substituting different entity parts, and then we search against whole web, uh, Wikipedia, intranet, or uh, different sources. Now, what are we getting? Since we are trying to achieve the best of both worlds, correction of entity values, what do we get where? We have features such as source of text, syntactic, discourse, coreference, logical, like idea of text entities. So from raw, we get syntactic and stuff if possible because it's nice, it's original, uh, somehow because it's averaging through millions of TX. Uh, idea is uh, uh, great, uh, so we want to. Then this we can if uh, we need to do it. Uh, so to have the text cohesive, we also in true sentence we borrow syntactic flow, discourse flow, reference and logical structure. Idea is taken from uh, the raw text, uh, but. Uh, idea sh should be like idea should be from raw text. However, is substituted if it's too far from uh, the topic. Uh, entities are definitely from true sentences. The values, as long as we can only uh, retain correct values in raw content, and also the whole phrases. So sometimes we cannot just take the values, but we need to uh, attach modifiers and other linguistic additional linguistic. Uh, information so uh, the values are not and phrases from true sentences are not just taken uh, uh, from the uh, uh, content but uh, the whole thing need to be maintained then uh, we need to do the whole thing is alignment it's not just taking individual words and sometimes we can just take individual words and substitute but in general, this is alignment problem of raw text and true text. However, this alignment is not symmetric. We know uh, what needs to be substituted and what goes from uh, which source. And what we show here, green is synonymous, so we can keep and red, in this case, uh, need to be substituted. Uh, we're going, uh, this example, <laughs> Uh, we're going back to a poetry example and uh, uh, then uh, the text uh, text about Nabokov which is a true text which is a good uh, multi-sentence candidate to extend the idea generated in raw text it is idea is good it is nicely generated I mean it's a good direction know what who who was translating Pushkin it's just that we need to know who really did it, not, hypo, not a random person with random attributes. So we take this text and try to merge. How, how do we know? Uh, so we get from uh, Kraft the expression, Kraft is a person, then Kraft wanted Pushkin to become translator. And then uh, we search, it as, search the web as a phrase. And then this is how we find Nabokov. Nabokov translating Pushkin, not Graf translating, but Nabokov translating Pushkin. And then uh, the whole phrase, while in St. Petersburg, Pushkin approached by this uh, fake person who wanted to become a translator of German edition. 
it turns out that there's no translation of Pushkin into German, and the, so there's no such person as Kraft and no German editor, and it's totally different times, so everything is different, but the idea, we maintain the idea of translation. So we substitute stuff in red uh, with stuff in, uh, with yellow. And see, we cannot just substitute words here. We have to substitute uh, the whole sentence. Otherwise, it wouldn't read. Just because there are too many uh, incorrect values here in neural generated content. Uh, so now we have a medical example. In this case, uh, specifically is not content generation example, but just two diagnoses, one not very professional and like uh, wrong diagnosis and correct diagnosis, how we align and substitute. And in this case, uh, we use uh, linguistic representation. So, okay, so uh, this uh, graph is semantic representation when we have called it abstract meaning representation when we have entities and types of relation between them. Uh, the top is cause and then drug, then on domain, uh, modality, argument, cause, then retain. So these are a, a semantic abstraction of incorrect diagnosis. And then uh, this is a second from the top is syntactic representation using visualization of uh, Stanford and LMP. So this we have part of speech of each word uh, plus uh, this graph label uh, connection between words. So we map these words, which are the same, is the same part of speech from here to here, which is not shown. But the most important, uh, we map green uh, true content and the red something we need to substitute. And now we're showing it at entity level, at semantic level, not at not as syntactic word level, sentence level, but uh, we show that using semantic representation and that that is that that is done inside uh, the system uh, now let's look at this problem uh, from the standpoint of uh, fact checking uh, then uh, we have uh, this text text about Benjamin's biography this domain is biography it turns uh, the machine uh, somehow invented that father was the vision of her first name highlight uh, that's true sentences which are used for substitution we highlight in yellow uh, wrong values are shown in red and uh, values which are updated in row sentences are shown in blue so it is not best known but famous pediatrician wrote the word famous manual it nothing to do with New York's Bam Bamberger School. Nothing about the school, uh, but instead an official founder of certain type of par uh, parenting. And born, he wasn't born in Philadelphia, but instead different date, different city. And again, his father, a Tony, not a physician. And we don't have information here. We don't substitute information about the mother. And here is the brother. And uh, uh, what we see, so we maintain the whole idea for biography. A content generation uh, borrowed the general biographical style. We have uh, individual, we have parents, we have occupation, uh, who the parents were. But it's all lie, all wrong. So we have to substitute, we follow the idea of biography. This is we borrow from the neural content. Uh, but we have to substitute all values. Names, profession, occupation, uh, where they were born, when, and so forth. 
Another example where it's totally uh, impossible to lie, totally impossible to have unreliable information is a personalized drug recommendation. Uh, neural content uh, gives uh, some skeleton how how to describe drug and how uh, how the drug some insight into drug research how different how, like different illnesses uh, different effects and again uh, what is in highlighted in yellow these are true uh, values uh, from the for the drug. Uh, so different, it turns out it treats different diseases in a different way, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't do uh, mood stabilization. It turns out it's less desirable than another drug. Uh, so again, we take overall content flow, we take the skeleton from raw content, and we substitute value uh, from real content, which again shown in shown in yellow. Again, green. Uh, uh, correct values and red stuff need to be removed or updated. Uh, and again, how the mining works. So uh, let's look at how to obtain true sentences. Uh, when we, we, in this case, we search a web for uh, the drug name, treating disease, treating condition, and. Uh, uh, if you have negation, like here, we, uh, we do not include it in the candidate uh, for substitution. If you get, uh, we assume that all these results from authoritative uh, healthcare sites, stuff in green, we accept as a candidate to substitute. So stuff in green, then we come back and form uh, yellow highlighted uh, to substitute entities. In star stuff in red, we determine that it's not uh, not appropriate for substitution. So this is uh, how we do uh, this assessment similarity between the query and the search result. We do it on our end. So if similarity is high, then we assume that uh, we can find sentence closer to raw phrase and then should be able to substitute it. And if it's red, uh, we don't use it. And now, Another level of considerations, okay, we did all this substitution, uh, we wrote personalized drug recommendation, but how about overall logical flow? How about overall discourse? And to estimate, uh, we map uh, rhetorical relations which we are considered, and this is another way to visualize discourse trees. Identation shows an, a nesting level. So it starts from here, and this, uh, like level four or five elementary discourse units, uh, means is uh, mapped into means, contrast is mapped into comparison, enablement is mapped into enablement. And what we want to do, we want to maintain overall discourse structure. If there's a lot of uh, nodes with rhetorical relations unattached, unmapped, it means that the discourse structure change significantly. So what we, we want we do, we want uh, discourse structure, uh, our raw text and resultant text to be close to each other, as close as possible. Uh, so again, since uh, here we have multiple candidates, we can do this procedure for multiple candidates and then uh, as a result, see if uh, we distorted discourse in as, uh, as little as possible. And now let's run again through the system architecture. Uh, basically, system architecture for value substitution. And that's again implemented in this open NLP similarity component and uh, converts text into better, does overall truthful and high quality and neural content. First, we take each sentence and determine if it's appropriate uh, for, in general, appropriate for inclusion into the result. We form a family of search queries and uh, are removing entities one by one and form an all query. So try to find as close a uh, true sentence or phrase to the raw phrase as possible. We run obtain list of candidates. Uh, then 
uh, we do this alignment by means of syntactic generalization. Uh, as I showed, it's implemented as graph alignment of row sentence and candidate sentence. And uh, that is needed for substitution before mapping between syntactic and semantic structure and identify entities uh, need to be substituted. And then we still uh, need to, depends, after we find the true sentence, we do fact checking if the sentence can still be used. If no, it uh, skipped. If yes, we, it's sufficient to substitute entities, then we perform uh, substitution. Uh, perform a verify agreement with other uh, substitutions of the same entities and try to find, depending if you are able to, uh, if it's sufficient to insufficient to substitute entities, uh, then we uh, substitute the longer phrases or maybe even sentences. If we can do at the level of individual, uh, then we perform it. And then at the, uh, the last step, uh, we uh, verify deviation of the discourse structure and try to keep it as least as possible. So to uh, conclude, uh, we build the tools first, the overall improvement of discourse structure and correction of entity values uh, to construct meaningful text. Uh, this tool works on top of neural content generation system, which are very popular over the last few years but nevertheless, they generate random and untruthful text. So these tools are needed. And uh, you cannot just take a GPT-2 content and apply it. It's not really applicable in most domains. And uh, also this tool is a step forward to early developed content generation uh, tools uh, presented at Apache Con over the last few years, as now uh, we leverage uh, transformer-based content generation and before we generated uh, from scratch. Okay, thank you.